Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Decante Figures and Collectibles Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, Leslie Vernon Action Figure. Now before we get into this figure, I have to say a quick note on basically what this is, because I'm sure some of you looking at this have no clue who the heck the character is. Maybe you saw my unboxing video of this, you might have what I told you there. But I have to say, as a fan of the movie, I am amazed that we've gotten an official released figure of this character. Now, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon is an independent horror movie. It's one of my favorite slasher movies I've seen in a long time. Really funny, really entertaining. Now, it's a slasher movie, so it's not particularly scary, but it's a lot of fun. Robert Englund's in it. Zelda Rubenstein is in it, one of the last roles I believe she had. Kane Hodder cameos in it. So it really is a loving tribute to horror movies. It exists in a world to some degree where Freddy and Jason and characters like that are real people. And it's not really clear if they're as they are in the movies or if those are over-dramatized versions of the characters. But they're just in the periphery. You hear about them in passing and as almost somebody you could aspire to be or look up to in a weird way. Obviously, they're still killers. They're still awful, awful people. But you have somebody like Leslie Vernon here who chooses to follow in that line of work and become a serial killer and become a legendary slasher. I think it's a half documentary style, half normal horror movie style movie that... It's just really a fun watch, especially if you're a fan of the genre. So the movie's been out for a while, and they've been trying to build up the independent basis to make a sequel. They basically have been trying every route they could think of, I think, to try to fund a sequel to the movie to be completely fan-funded. And of course, to that end, you have to put your name out there. So what better way than to have an action figure come out and join the ranks of the many we've already seen done of famous horror characters by McFarlane or NECA or Mezco or Soda or a billion different companies that have touched this genre in the past. But something that has to be mentioned right up front here is the fact that Decante Figures and Collectibles is a very small company from what I've been able to see. It looks like it's just a few people working. This is their first officially released figure. And looking at it, I cannot grade it in the same way I would grade a NECA release, or a McFarlane release, or a Mezco release, because it's basically a mass-produced custom in a way. But now that I've talked long enough about everything surrounding this figure, let's take a look at Leslie Vernon here. Now I'm going to go against my norm real quick and actually show off the packaging a little bit. It's a very normal looking package you get for any figure like this, but I want to point out a few quick awesome details. First of all, this package has feet, which I think is kind of cool. You can actually display it and have it sit on these feet so it would display well, which shows the company is thinking very hard about what they're doing with the packaging. Also, there is a $80 package available on their website where you can actually have the figure come to you signed. And it's not signed across the bubble here. It's signed on the insert card here and then sealed around it, preserving the signature. I believe the signature is of the actor who played Leslie Vernon or the director or both. I don't remember exactly. But if you're a fan, that is a really cool touch to add. On the back here, we get a rundown of the figure. Obviously, I'm not going to get into this. It's not what I do on here. But the one thing on here I have to mention is... A percentage of all sales of our Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon line goes directly to Glen Echo Entertainment for the funding of the next installment of the movie. That is freaking awesome. Now, like I said before, Leslie isn't like his brothers over at NECA and McFarlane and all that stuff. So, we're going to have to go with a little different scale. If anything... I have to say, he reminds me a lot of a Mezco figure, an earlier Mezco figure, maybe perhaps even the remake Jason figure, which isn't always the best thing to compare something to, but he comes off as a very stylized representation of the character. In the movie, the mask was a lot more sinister looking, and with the wide-eyed expression here, he looks a little on the goofy side. He doesn't have quite the frightening 
persona that he did in the movie. The face is also a little stretched out vertically and a little compressed depth-wise. The detail on the mask isn't too bad. It looks vaguely like the mask from the movie. It's got his little frown going on here. The deep sockets of the eyes. Now, unfortunately, this mask is not a removable piece. It's all one solid head, which I feel really hurts the figure. I've done two customs of Leslie Vernon myself, just being a huge fan. And both customs, I really felt the need to have a removable mask. In the way this is sculpted, we really don't get enough depth between the mask and the face. In the movie, the character has dark circles painted around his eyes, and the mask fits over that. So the mask has these wide eye holes, but you can see his eyes kind of recessed into the depths of them. And they definitely try to bring that across in this figure, but the eyes are just too wide, and the detail on the pupil is lacking. It's a white circle with a black dot, which is a little disappointing. He has his straps here on the back and his hair, which are pretty decently sculpted. He has real ears sticking out behind the mask. They did get the color of the mask really nice, and there's some brown, dirty texture to it. But does look pretty good. Another bit I'm a little unhappy with is the hair up here at the top. In the movie, he kind of has this doll hair thing almost going on. It's very messy and curly and sticks out in all different directions, and it really is just wild looking. And here it's just plastered against the mask, and it's a little disappointing that we didn't get something a little cooler there. It would have been nice to have some more of the real look of the character in there. Moving on to the body, the body is much better, I think, than the head itself. They did a pretty darn good job. He has his overalls on that are shredded all over the place. He also has his flannel undershirt here, which is equally shredded, and they did a really good job with it. He's got all kinds of holes in it, particularly this hole in his chest, you can see, is very iconic to the movie, very iconic to the costume, which is really well done. More shreds all down his sleeve. This looks really good. This looks like what the character needs to look like. So, I don't have any complaints with the way this is done. He has a nice chunk taken out of his overalls down here, which looks fantastic. Really cool. And his pockets back here. He's got all kinds of little silver rivets all over his costume, all over the overalls, which is a detail I think would be easily omitted, but very nice. This guy's buckles and the loops up here. I'm a little confused by the way the straps and the overalls are done because they come up and they're this color of the overalls themselves coming up the back and about midway up they become black. I don't believe that corresponds to anything in the movie and I'm a little weirded out as to why that was done. The coloration of the overalls in general is a little wonky because we have this black part here and we have very heavy dirt gone over this upper chest portion here. And it comes down to the legs, and the dirt is much lessened. It's the same, you could see almost a grayish blue for the base color, and then this yellowish almost dust settled over the top. And it's very, very heavy up here. And then when you get down here, it just almost disappears to nothing. And it's a little distracting. He has uh, plenty more holes. You can see the long john sticking out through his overalls. The tattered bottoms, I think, came out really well. They look really good. More of the long john sticking out there. With his feet, not the best sculpted feet I've ever seen, but they are serviceable. Normally, I cover accessories up front. I actually forgot in this review. He does come with his hand scythe. It's pretty cool. It's got a black handle, the red stem here, which is movie accurate, and a very nice shape on the blade. He also has the rivets right here, which are really nice. Very movie accurate. The only problem is it's a little small. It needs to be a little bigger. Maybe about 25% bigger, I think. But he does come with a right hand with a hole in it that you can peg it right into, which is really cool. He holds it just fine. And as an added awesome bonus, come around here to his back, and he has a little pocket here that you can actually stick the hand sight in. You just pop it right in there. And he can go about doing what he's doing and have his scythe at the ready. Now, I believe this is the way it's supposed to go in. It would make more sense. He could reach back and grab it and just pull it out. But you also can take it and put it in handle first. And it sits just as well like that. So two different ways you could store his hand scythe, which is really awesome. Leslie also comes with some alternate hands. Here we have an alternate right hand that's holding a burlap bag. Now... 
getting this with the figure sent me straight back to the film because I couldn't remember this bag. I could not for the life of me think of why it was included. Well, I finally found it, and if anybody like me is a fan and looking for it, it's the scene where he's trying to shoo off the documentary team, trying to make them go home while he's trying to do his thing. I'm trying to be as spoiler-free and vague as possible with this. But you have the bag that I believe this is what he carried his mask and his scythe in while he was prepping to do his attack. We could take his hand right here, the weapon holding hand, and just unpeg it. They gave us some nice big thick pegs on here, which I am very grateful for. And then you take it and you pop it right back in there. Now I must say, the detail on the bag itself is really nicely done. There's some great burlap pattern going in here. The paint on it's pretty good as well. Some nice dirt effects. The hand itself throws me off a little bit. We can see almost like a strap going over the hand midway here and the fingers, but the fingers almost look like they're separate from the rest of the hand. There's too much of a line. I think it's actually partly the paint here that's throwing me off with it. And that's a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, he does have his thumb coming around the other side. My other gripe about it, and it's a minor one, but I really would have liked this to have been an alternate left hand. In the movie, he holds it in his left hand. And he has the scythe in his right and the bag in his left. At least in the scene that I managed to catch where he had this. And it makes a lot more sense that he would have had this as a left hand because I'm never going to display him like this. I am never, ever going to display him with just the bag. It's a waste. I mean, you have his weapon. His weapon's cool. His weapon's well sculpted. You gotta have his weapon in his hand, not this bag. If the bag was a weapon, I could see it. But in the left hand, it would have been awesome. You could have had all the more stuff on the figure. Now, Leslie also has this left hand right here, with all the fingers extended, but his ring finger bent down. Once again, I went back and looked at the movie, and I can't find a reference for this. And somebody please correct me if I'm just missing something. But I can't find why with this hand. I really can't. But this one will also unpeg just as easily. And we could peg in his alternate left hand, which is my preferred left hand, which is just kind of a relaxed hand, but still a little bend to the fingers, a little more vicious, I think. I think that's the left hand I'm going to display him with. So probably the scythe in the right and the this hand in the left. For articulation, going back to my Mezco analogy, or even a McFarlane analogy, we have to look at him as more of a display piece and less of an articulated figure like we've come to expect with some of the newer modern figures, which is okay. Articulation costs a lot of money to engineer into a figure. As I said before, this is a very, very small operation and we have to give it that concession that they're not working with the tools that NECA does to make something like this. He has a ball jointed head, which has a great range of motion, a lot of up and down, well, especially for just a ball joint. You can get some great tilting in there, and obviously you could spin it around. He has cut joints at the shoulders that will swivel all the way around. He has an elbow joint on just his right arm, which is a little weird to me. I would have preferred my articulation to be symmetrical. It weirds me out a little bit that there's just this joint. And to be honest, it feels a little fragile. I'm a little nervous moving it. And maybe it's just me being new to the figure a little bit that kind of just a little trepidation with it. It may be fine, but it feels like it could, at least if nothing else, get very loose over time. And that's a bit of a bummer, but I'll just be very gentle with it and very careful, and I think we'll be okay. He has swivel joints at the wrist. They're just cut joints. I thought they were ball joints at first because there is a little play in them, but I believe it's because this whole figure feels like it's made of more of a vinyl-esque material. I don't know what it really is, but everything on it's a little pliable. So fits aren't exact. I think that might be why this feels a little loose at times as well, just because everything's a little soft. His waist, he has a swivel and a hinge, which really surprised me that he had a hinge. It also kind of surprised me that it's not just a ball joint, because it seems like that might have actually even been easier to craft. I don't know. I and mean, obviously they went with what they felt was best. But a ball joint would have made 
equal sense here, but this joint works pretty well. You don't get a ton of forward and back just because of his skull, but the swivel is nice to have. And then down here at the feet, he rotates at the ankle. Once again, you get a little play, so to get him to stand, you do have to mess with it a little. But I do like that they made the flannel and the foot a separate piece from the pant leg, so you get that rotation, and you can keep the pants looking ripped up and cool like that. That was a really nice move on their part. Overall, I feel like this figure's a bit of a mixed bag in the general sense, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and recommend him for Leslie Vernon fans. Now hear me out on this one. Obviously, if you're not a fan of the character, you're not gonna bother. But if you are a fan of the movie, this is the only official release I think we're ever going to get of this character. Who knows? Maybe the sequel could happen. The sequel could take off. He could be the next Freddy. But at this point, this is it. And no matter what, it's going to be the original, official released figure of this character. The paint detail, I actually like a lot. I didn't talk about it quite as much as I intended to, but it's... Fairly well painted, the colors are pretty good. I wish the dirt from the chest had covered over into the pants and I wish those straps on his shoulders weren't black. But overall, it's really solid. And all I can think of looking at this guy and every thought I have about gripes or this could have been done better is I look at NECA and I think the recent Evil Dead 2 line is ending after four figures and had to reuse a bunch of parts between it because Evil Dead 2 is too obscure and they wouldn't sell enough figures. I think about the fact that for every cool, unique Marvel figure Hasbro gives us, they give us 75 Iron Men and 273 spider man I know I might be exaggerating a little bit, but to cover the cost of doing a unique character, these major companies have to pump out so much of the same stuff that it's almost nauseating at times. So, in any real sense, if you're gonna go and tackle, especially for your very first figure license, an obscure character from an independent movie, that just takes balls in a business sense in general. And the biggest, biggest plus to this, to me, is if you buy this figure, you are helping get another Leslie Vernon movie made. And that is worth the price of admission here, I think. It's a $25 figure, which, once again, for what almost amounts to a custom, what's going to be, I'm sure, a fairly limited release of a figure, that's not a bad price. Part of that's going to go to funding the new movie, so fans can get their shot to see a new adventure with Leslie Vernon, more of the same awesomeness we got in the first movie again. That's just plain cool to me. And while this thing isn't going to win figure of the year, it's solid. It is solid enough that I can recommend it. And I'm not just saying good things about it because I got it as a prize. And I'm not just saying good things about it because I love the character. And I'm not just saying good things about it because I'm trying to suck up to anybody or any crap like that. I really think fans of the movie need to check out this piece and need to pick him up. And whether it came down to winning a prize or if I had to go online and buy it, I would have done it. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. I've been posting pictures of random finds and all kinds of cool stuff. Plenty of figures coming out soon, so I'll have plenty of things to show off and talk about. And feel free to start discussions on there and all kinds of stuff. And we'll try to make a little mini Outside the Box community out of it. And until next time, this has been another Outside the Box Review. Stay tuned for more to come.